Gene Starwind and Jim Hawkins are guns for hire. Gene has dreams of exploring space, but is hesitant due to his own past experiences. But as fate would have it, he stumbles across a mysterious girl named Melfina, who is a literal living key to the spaceship known as the Outlaw Star, to find the ultimate mysterious treasure known as the Galactic Ley Line. Along the way, he's confronted by space pirates, gains a full crew, including an assassin and a rambunctious super-powered cat girl. Together, they explore the galaxy with the ship, magic guns, and their own drive to keep going forward. Outlaw Star is a science fiction action anime that deals with subjects like self-reflection, trust, as well as exploration. And with the adventures of the Outlaw Star in our season finale, we ask the question, why is exploration essential? At the beginning of the story, Gene Starwind is very, very hesitant. We learn that he witnessed his own father die when they were exploring in a space shuttle. This caused a massive anxiety in him to never go into space, seeing that space and people dying as correlations to one another. But despite his fears, he desperately wishes to go. He comes across a woman named Hilda, who's looking for a mysterious treasure. Jean has made a name for himself as a gun for hire at this point, and really, she just needs a bodyguard. But little does she know that he actually becomes the key focus of the entire story. He doesn't want to go into space, but eventually is forced to go with Hilda, being pursued by space pirates. And not just space pirates, space spellcasting pirates, who use mysticism, spells, and different forms of torture to get what they want. And what they want is Melfina, a mysterious girl inside of a suitcase with no memories and really doesn't know anything other than her name. She not only is lost in the dark, but so is Jean. They're very much adrift in space trying to figure out what to do next. And so, in that darkness, they seek solace in not only each other, but really just what to do next. Among their travels, they also come across a very loudmouth alien girl, part of the cat-like people, the Kataral Kataral, named Aisha Clan Clan, who is super strong and honestly pretty dense in all things considered. But every time she tries to confront the duo, she always gets thwarted one way or another. The other comrade ends up being a unbeatable assassin named Twilight Suzuka, a mysterious samurai woman who, weirdly enough, doesn't use a samurai sword. She instead uses a boken, a wooden sword, and yet she's still able to kill all of her opponents. These mysterious women seem to be almost drawn to Gene, not in a sexual way, but more in a way of his energy and something around the outlaw star, Melfina, and just their overall presence, drawing in this group of weird, out-of-box characters. And yet, they all eventually join the crew. They all end up working together in their singularity of finding the Galactic Ley Line, of achieving each of their individual goals through each other. Having people to rely on, to care for, to lean on. And it's not outrightly overt in the series. It's very, very much implied, which allows us to implicate our own feelings and emotions towards that relationship and maybe read too much into it or maybe see ourselves in those characters. Suddenly out of the woodwork, there are multiple people that are either going after them, Melfina, or the Outlaw Star itself, seeing as they are the key to finding the Galactic Ley Line. One of these threats is the McDougal Brothers, a group of space pirate brothers whose sole goal is to take whatever has value and whatever anyone charges them to do it for. One of the McDougal Brothers, Henry, actually starts developing feelings for Melfina, more along the lines of an obsession than anything else, where the older brother, Ron, just wants to destroy anything in his path. Among them and the K-Pirates is Professor Khan, who apparently is the lead scientist behind the Leyline Project, and knows all about its mysteries but is refusing to tell anyone about it. These threats 
force the group to constantly have to battle obstacles along the way to just find and explore what is the galactic ley line. Why is it the ultimate treasure in the galaxy? And what is the main goal behind getting Malfina in the first place? They only want to help Malfina. They only want to see what is out in space. But they seem to just be the pawns in a grander game that they don't really know much of, but are fully willing to get involved in. Through their travels, they get to experience weird and bizarre things like dinosaur police officers in space, brain-controlling cacti that manipulates giant cockroaches, or getting involved in a space race for no real significant reason. These adventures just keep piling and piling, but we watch and get to enjoy each and every one of them because we attach ourselves to the characters that are going through these experiences. And we obviously get a little bit of serotonin getting to see them enjoying themselves or them facing struggles. Despite the fate that's dangling of the literal collapse of the universe, and despite the overwhelming threat that is constantly hovering above each and every one of their heads, they still just enjoy each other. They still have fun. They still do things outside of their comfort zone. Even when the mysterious leader of the K-Pirates, Lord Hazanko, is constantly threatening them, sending out weird mysterious creatures after them, using literal magic, Jean just smiles and faces it head on, which takes us to the end of their journey. When they finally get to the end and where the Galactic Ley Line is destined to be, they find out that Melfina isn't just the key to finding the Galactic Ley Line. She is the literal embodiment of the Galactic Ley Line, known as the Lady of the Ley Line. She's essentially the passcode or screen into the supercomputer that is the Galactic Ley Line, with the capability to literally create and uncreate the universe. Lord Hazanko wants this entire thing to be at his very control, manipulating the universe to have it however he wants. And Jean, not quite really knowing what he's getting into, gets into the Galactic Ley Line with Hazanko and fights him. No longer is he obsessed with finding the Galactic Ley Line. He found it. His goal is Malfina. His goal is to care for Malfina, be there with her, because she's been with him from the beginning. From his first steps into space, she's been there. Even though she was a hollow shell of a person who didn't have any memories, the experiences that they went through with him and the rest of the crew are experiences that they got to share together. Malfina wasn't a fighter. She didn't attack people, she didn't have any weapons, skills, or really bring anything other than using the ship itself. But that didn't matter. What mattered was she mattered to Jean. She mattered to the crew. She was a traveler, just like they were. And after they're able to beat the K-Pirates, take out Professor Kwan, and finally get Melfina back, they do what they did before, go home. Find the next fun thing to do. Get together and start a new adventure. Because that's all they really cared about. Being with each other and having fun. So, why is exploration essential? Outlaw Star is a perfect example of travel, not destination. Focusing more on the concepts of how we progress than actually what we're progressing to. We don't question things like Catwoman transforming into cats. Girls who are in briefcases and are the keys to solving problems of the universe. Or things like having a gun that literally shoots magic. We just see these things. We experience them just as the other characters do. We're in the journey. We're not in the line of why, how, who, what. We're just there for the ride. And I think true exploration, not just on the outside, but within ourselves, should be less about trying to solve problems and be more about enjoying the problems themselves. Not everything can be like that, but the few things that we can just enjoy, absorb, just be in the moment, are more precious than we realize are things that we get to explore around us. Trying new things, going new places, 
being somewhere different than where you were before. That is the true key to exploration, is to not have a same experience every time. Not reaching a goal, not wanting something at the end of that road, following that road itself. And I truly believe that if each of us were able to take more time to enjoy the traveling, we'd be less concerned with the destination. This season of Hypothetical, we experienced acceptance, grief, identity, trauma, stagnation, escapism, love, memory, and exploration. Each season having a parallel narrative to string across, and this one is no different, with the central theme being an emotional journey. With each of these having different goals, but essentially having the same narrative driving force. Emotion. How emotion affects us. How emotion drives us and changes our perspective on it. And allows us to not only look at ourselves, look at those around us, look at the world around us, but look within ourselves to try to find the answers to some of these questions. Which is ultimately my goal for this series. Not for me to answer the questions for myself, but for you to look at these series, look within yourselves, and maybe ask some hard-hitting questions of yourself. Maybe you do have the right answer. Maybe you have the wrong answer. Maybe you're looking at things from a different perspective. At the end of it all, the goal has always been for this series to at least allow you, the audience, to see things maybe from a different point of view because truth be told we're all very very different but we all share in some universal central narratives some structures of beliefs moralities and feelings that shared experience allows us to connect better every single way that we possibly can and i'd like to think that with the reception that i've received from this series being much higher than i ever expected that Maybe being more in touch with emotion isn't just a part of who we are. It's a part of a discussion of what we can be. I can't wait for next season to explore new possibilities and new perspectives on things that may or may not be similar to you. Despite my opinion and despite your opinion, in the end, these aren't answers. They're hypotheticals.